What's crack -a and it's your boy Bro Schmo, just in case you did not know so back again for some more off-season uh, videos we're gonna be doing the Bears off-season if I were the GM what would I do basically I'll give you the free agency I'll also give you a 2020 mock draft and then we'll look at the star lineup after that uh my dog's excited for it <laughs> ain't that right Akila? But uh, yeah, go ahead, become a bro and subscribe and uh, leave a thumbs up if you enjoy the content. As well as, uh, yeah, keep in mind, I got two rules when I do these things. Um, I don't do trades. Just kind of muddies up the, the waters here and it's can't find a draft simulator that will allow me to trade a pick or trade a player for picks. And then on top of that, also uh, the starting lineup lineups you'll see aren't base three four four three or stuff like that it's what position groups saw the most snaps last year so that's how we're going to be doing that so let's go ahead let's dive in they don't have a lot of cap 13 million don't have a lot of draft picks either not one in the first round either so it's kind of tough so we needed to clear some space and i cut leonard floyd which is kind of a given uh i got rid of cordell uh patterson and then, uh, this one was a little more tough. I got rid of my boy Prince, because, um, honestly, you could keep him if you want. Uh, he's, he costs $9 million. He was probably their most consistent corner last season. But I'd rather use that money to kind of re-sign a few guys, as well as, uh, that helped contribute last season. So I wanted to bring those guys back. So let's go ahead and look at who I did re-sign. Kevin Pierre-Lewis, who actually did pretty stellar last season in limited uh, time. Two years, $8 million is what I gave him. I brought back Cornelius Lucas, who actually played very well at right tackle um, when asked to do so. I got him back one year, $3 million. And then Nicholas Williams, who actually did pretty well um, rotating in and there at the nose tackle position. I got him back one year, $1 million. I only made one signing because that only leaves us with $33 million. And I brought in Marcus Mariota. I wanted to bring in competition for um, Mitch Trubisky. So now Mariota, he has the opportunity to basically Tannehill Mitch. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's interesting. But let's go ahead because honestly, most of this, most of the, this is going to be most of the guys we fill in here. It's going to have to be through the draft just because they're so limited on on um, cap. But they're also limited with draft capital, so it's going to be tough. So let's go ahead and let's uh, dive into that. Click, click. And there we go. Oh, I still got to do all this. But yeah, man, it's going to be tough uh, with the Bears, uh, especially. Just... Because, I mean, I want to fill in some spots on, uh, on the offensive line. Tight end really hasn't produced a lot for him. Uh, you want to still keep addressing maybe the secondary. Because their defense was, was all right last year. But it could be better. So, let's go ahead. They're running. We know we don't got to pick till the second round. There we go. Yeah, and I think if they're gonna they're gonna get Mitch's replacement, it's probably gonna happen in 2021. If it's not Mario. <laughs> Which I doubt. But you never know. Like I said, he could Tannehill it. Like how that's a verb now. So on to the next round. And I like some of the guys left on the board. All right, here we are with our next pick. First thing I want to look at, ah, Adam Troutman, man. That's that's a guy I wouldn't mind. Tay Moody, I'm kind of eyeing, and I think we could get him next round just because the injury red flags. It seems to be the case of him falling down most draft boards. I like all five of these guys, but I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of putting defense on the back burner just because how bad. Um, the offense was last year, but I mean, how much, how much will a tight end really move the needle for this team? 
I mean, they virtually got no production. They still have Trey Burton on a huge contract. I almost rather bring in a corner. Or even an edge, because they got... All right, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna look at best available. Yeah, this is really tough, man. It's tough to be a Bears fan. I don't know, I don't think Josh Uchi really matches what the Bears want defensively. Nye, uh, kinda sorta, but. I think Julian Akawara is actually more, more up the block there. Gives him a very athletic, very speedy pass rusher. Wells with a ton. I mean a ton of strength. Alright, so this is Bears second pick. And we could still go that tight end. Let's look at who's left a corner. And Dancer would be so nice. But I mean, man, addressing defense. Why? I mean, it's not, it's not bad. It's smart drafting based on value, but Mitch Trubisky, you don't want to come in, have him come in with the same playmakers, especially a tight end. Tight end was so weak last year, so I'm gonna go with Troutman. Man, I don't think the Bears have a third round pick, do they? So Moody's probably out of the question now that I think about it. Uh, but you know what? That first round, that's that's a solid first round. Said first, second round. Solid first round for the Bears, which happens to be the second. Oh man. Oh man, I thought it paused for a second. I was like, oh my gosh, they got a third rounder. I'm sure they could get something for Leonard Floyd, or even uh, Prince. Uh, what is it Amukara? Amu Kamara. There we go. I mean, they need safety too, because I couldn't spend money to keep Haha -ha Clinton and Knicks. Dicks. Knicks. Knicks. Haha -ha Clinton and Knicks. Hold up. <laughs> uh... Dicks. Okay. There we go. Why oh, you gotta have multiple uh, multiple names, Mark? Multiple last names. All right, so we're gonna get two pick or two picks here in the third round. I was gonna say I would love if Robert Hunter, Dar Dama uh, Damian Lewis were on the board, but that won't be the case. Jordan Jackson, I don't think will be on the board this late. But if he is, I will take him. Man, you never know how the draft falls, you know? Um, yeah, it looks like he bounced. Uh, I do like Michael uh, Wainu. And it is our pick now. Do you want to look at Taco Driscoll? I love, love Throckmorton, but I think he's a day two guy. I don't think he'll be here. Look at safety. Oh boy, how... Oh boy, how safety flew off the board. Oh, my God. And, mm, I like... I like Geno Stone. Uh, corner. Corner. Uh, AJ Green. Bert Hill. Mm, there's a few guys. Not many, though. Hmm. I think their defensive line's fine. Uh I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with this. I like I am way new. Oh, they only got one? They only got one from the Raiders? Oh shoot. Juan Jennings. I don't think you'll be around. That is interesting that he's here in the fifth round, though. That he was. 
Uh, I mean, honestly, I don't know what more we can do with the offense. Because I think the off... I'm just going to tell you, I don't think the offense is a problem. I think it's Trubisky. Some of the play calling is a little whack, too, but... All right, so... Antonio Gandy Golden, man. That's interesting. Here this late, too. I know wide receiver is kind of not a problem here, but... I don't mind bringing in playmakers. This is about the range. I mean, Driscoll's there, too. I mean, Throckmorton and Moss won't be here by any means. Take a look at the corner position. It's a little bit of the same. Safety, it's a little bit of the same. Uh, I mean, JR Breed's not bad, though. Neither is Geno Smith. Uh, I'm gonna go actually into it's. It may sound a little weird given how much depth they have. Well, not even depth, but the starters they have there. But bringing in another receiver, I mean, it's not a bad option. Not bad. It's not bad. Whatever I have to tell myself to sleep at night, am I right? Uh, at this point, I think I'm kind. I'm okay to bring in Geno Stone. I think he'd be good uh, as a single high, and it'll allow Eddie Jackson really to kind of move freely, which he kind of did last year. He was doing a lot for the team last year. All right. So again, good like good draft picks. Just there's a lot of holes to fill for the Bears. Like I don't know what they're what they're necessarily looking for. You know. Like I said, limited. They got limited resources. So here we are. Their pick. There's a corner I actually really like with. Meek Robertson, I think, is a slot only, and we're kind of fine there. Um, with Geno Stone, who could play in the slot, as well as they have Scrine. Um, and I think this is about the range where Kevin McGill will go. Guy's got great size, 4 5 speed, very underrated. I think he'd be a good developmental type of guy. All right, so. What what to do next? What to do next? Oh. Probably offensive line. Oh, it is our pick. I like I like this pick of Yazir Durant here. Here in the seventh, good, good, could be a good swing tackle. Need help at tackle, and I mean, if he isn't, uh, if he isn't all that in a bag of chips, he could also play guard. So I'll go, I'll go with that. I think he's kind of a steal this late. And you know, I think for the most part, we've done a lot with the little that we were given with the Bears. As from a draft standpoint, I mean, all I did was act. Add Marcus Mar Mariota, you know. Uh, I don't mind bringing in more corners. Just a fuller. Hmm. Okay, we did address safety. I feel like I'm thinking so intense. I'm gonna burn right through my cap. All right, we're gonna go Reggie Robinson. He's a good late day pick as well. So, I mean, this is very similar to what the Bears did last year, taking a few shots uh, late day three at secondary. All right, so at this point, we're just. We would go best player available. I don't know if the Bears have another pick, though. Nope. All right, so just a quick overlook at 
what we achieved through this. Julian Akawara gives us a dangerous, dangerous, especially with Khalil Mack on the other side, gives us a dangerous edge rusher. Adam Troutman will be there competitive. Uh, he'll be there competing for the starting tight end spot. Michael on uh, on Wayne, he'll be probably no lie. He'll probably end up starting. At, I think it'll be right guard. Um, Antonio Gandy Golden gives us just some death of receiver. You know, Stone gives us a potential starter there in the secondary uh, with Robinson and McGill. Developmental guys at corner. Yazir Durant, just some depth on offensive line. So let's take a look at what the, what the starting lineup will look like in 2020. Starting lineup, we got Mitch Trubisky at quarterback until he blows it and Mariota becomes a new starter but i got david montgomery starting in there at uh running back and then alan robinson taylor gabriel anthony miller remember we also got uh antonio gandy golden uh also adam troutman will be i think will end up being the starting tight end trey burden might have something to say about that though you got leno daniels white hair and then on way new sitting there at right guard and then lucas like i said i liked how cornelius lucas played near the tail end of last year at right tackle so uh, i'm more than willing to let him at least battle out with massey and then on to the defense akeem Nix, you got goldman you got a few guys there with uh with uh nick williams and uh was it Bilal that um that got rotate there cleo mack akawara there at edge then we got raekwon smith you got kevin pierre lewis and then the secondary, I'm a little antsy about. I got, I got Fuller, I got uh, Scrine there at corner, but I got Duke uh, Shelley playing that corner two position. He they they drafted him late last year. He played all of eight snaps last year, but I think give this guy a chance because the other guys we we picked up, they're kind of developmental talents. And then Eddie Jackson and then Geno Stone coming in, starting there in the secondary. But that's it for the video. This one was extremely tough, so I'd really love to hear what you would do with the uh, Bears because not a lot of options. But uh, until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later.